You and I come to this observance of All Saints Day with associations already in us of saints and sainthood. This is not the first day that this idea of a saint or what it means to live in a saintly pattern of life has come to you. And so I was thinking about common associations with the saints or with sainthood in our popular culture. And perhaps at the most superficial level, for some saints are cartoon caricatures with little animated halos above their heads that appear in times in which virtue is the agenda of the illustrator to move the narrative along. For others, saints are images on medallions or figurines that represent something that is associated with God, but in a visual way. For others, saints are people who somehow earned an official credential from a church hierarchy or bureaucracy that went through some kind of beatification process. Who knows how that works? Some kind of mystery in which people meet together and have councils and consider whatever it is that they consider and then make a pronouncement. This person is sainted and their saint's day will be thus. And whether any of those have a resonance with you, those particular characterization of saints are hard to go past a certain point with. They exist either on a kind of surface level or at a bit of a distance that makes their identities or the representation of them somewhat remote. And so I wanted to consider this day in which we are coming out of the observance of Halloween, the Day of the Dead in some culture, All Souls Day and All Saints Day in some Christian traditions. How is it that we access the saints? Because on a really practical level, if we can't get to them, then what good are they? That's a selfish thing to say. Of course, they are good and they don't need our recognition to be able to have the actions and the example of their life, beloved of God. But for us, since we are us and not those who are designated as saints, it becomes important whether or not we can get to them or whether or not they remain on a surface or at a distance. And one of the conceptions of a saintly life has to do with pious disciplines or pious actions. The things that most people associate with religious people. And whether or not you consider yourself religious or not, it's not so in vogue to say one is religious these days. More people prefer to say they're spiritual but not religious. But the saints, they still have this association with religiosity in the best sense of that term. Devotion, piety, reverence, the practices of life that you might associate in the extreme with individuals who live in cloistered religious communities. Nuns and monks whose rhythm of days revolves around regular observances of devotionals, whose lives and work and relationships are supposed to be grounded in prayer and in love of neighbor. And for some people, the existence of those communities, those individuals, is comforting. There is another religious tradition that holds that because of the actions and the piety of the most faithful, the world is being held up and all creatures in it and all of the life of the world, even those who have zero regard for the religious. 
And so for some, the fact that there are still places in which people are religious, even if they are not, is a comforting thought. But does that make a difference? Can we sponge off of other people in other places if that is not a part of our practice, a part of the way of our own daily routines and practices? To an extent, the answer is yes. Because none of us live as islands alone. It is horrific when you hear about the detrimental effects that individuals in our present world are subjected to, the closest that you can come to being an island on your own, which is to be kept in solitary confinement with no contact with other human beings, the psychological, the physiological, the mental health degradations that that condition of living inflicts upon individuals. And so we know from the devastation of solitary confinement that those of us who don't live in solitary confinement are conditioned in very important ways by those who are around us. And the actions of those, even though they are not our own actions, matter. When you are in a toxic environment and when there is conflict and there is strife and there is abuse, that affects you. And in the same way, when you are in a holy environment in which there is generosity, in which there is forbearance, in which there is cooperation and goodwill and love of neighbor, that similarly affects you. And so the pious practices of those who are referred to as saints become models and inspirations in and of themselves and then springboards for those of us to the extent that we decide that we might like to in some way adopt some of those practices. Medical science has produced much research that the practice of meditation or the practice of prayer or the practice of mindfulness, there's overlaps in these different disciplines of putting yourself in a place of stillness, a place of contemplation, a place of reflectiveness has benefits to our physical and mental health. Spiritual practitioners, even those who are saints, have known this for a long time. But it's always good, especially considering the history and the legacy that we have of conflict between science and religion, between those who are empirically minded and those who are spiritually faith minded, when there are overlaps between the disciplines that reinforce that the practices that we attribute to the saints are good beyond just religiosity. So one of the ways in which we can access saints is by considering anew what effect might those practices of piety have in our own lives? Is there a need that we feel for more settledness and more groundedness in the midst of our own lives and in the world around us. If you're already totally grounded, if nothing flusters you, if you don't have any concerns about the influences of things around you, don't worry, this isn't for you. But just in case you find yourself sometimes at a bit of a frazzle, you find yourself being buffeted and thrown off by events that swirl around you and that are out of your control. The saints had something to say about living in the midst of such storms and ways of coping and compensating, ways of turning our attention both inward and upward towards the presence of God in the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. God, the author of life, who exists all around us. So there is on this Saint's Day something valuable and important to be contemplated about practices of piety, practices of prayer, 
practices of reading intentionally and expectantly the stories of God in relationship with God's people that come to us in Scripture. The practices of being present in community with others around a liturgy that points us towards the reality of God in our midst. These are the things that the saints made their daily sustenance as much as bread and water. There is a second dimension, equally important as so-called religious practices that I might call faith in action. It is one thing, and not an insignificant thing, for individuals to go on retreats, for individuals to go out into wilderness places, for individuals to call time out and to push aside things that are clamoring for attention in oftentimes not so helpful ways. But we also read in the New Testament particularly that bluntly stated, faith without works is dead. That's a bit of a sharp claim. But also known to those who have come before us, those who have practiced intentionally seeking relationship with God, it is not so hard to go into this place of contemplation that doesn't just restore us from some of the degradations of the world, but separates us from the world around us in a kind of denial of our place in it. And so many of the saints, those perhaps who are most known to you, are individuals who made choices to let flow from the piety and devotion of their life actions which lived out Jesus' great two commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we talked about that. We thought about that just last week about ways in which we can be intentional of being practitioners of that love in tangible ways, in ways that come to the aid of others, that are responsive to the needs of others, in ways that acknowledge our own blessing and giftedness and multiply that blessing in the world. We know from the lives of the saints that they did not see faith as they came to know it as a private treasure to be kept to themselves. And it is exactly for this reason that we know of them. Think about an individual who treated their religiosity, their piety, as so private so as to never tell anybody else about it. Well, we wouldn't know about that person because they would have hidden it. But the saints are people who proclaim, not in an obnoxious, not in a Bible thumping, not in a I'm going to convert you to win souls for Christ kind of way, but in a gracious way that was so enthusiastic and infectious that the lives of those around them were lifted up. You have known these people. At times in your own life, you have been this person about whom somebody else would say, my life is better because I have known her. I am so thankful that he is part of my life. And it is the action of saints taking the foundation of their faith which grounds them, but translating that into the manifest love of God in the world around us. How different would our gospel stories be if all that they were were the teachings of Christ? People who live in their heads would be really quite fine with that. He's got a lot of good ideas. He teaches a lot of wisdom. The things that he says are very inspirational. But then when it came time to be in relationship with other people, he said, eh, not my problem. Good luck. Hope things get better for you. That's not the Gospels we have. We have 
this individual sent by God into the world who was constantly pouring himself out so that others' lives might be lifted up. That is a way that for many of us, connection to the saints becomes most accessible. How is it that we take the gifts of our own life, refuse to hoard them as private treasure, and instead cast them around us recklessly and wastefully so that the world knows that there are people who believe that God is calling individuals in this time and in this place to be a blessing. That's when change takes place. That's when lives get transformed. That's when communities get strengthened. It is not a panacea that solves all the world's problems and make every instance of violence and conflict and abuse and selfishness go away. Sometimes individuals contemplating the possibility of the lives of sainthood get overwhelmed. I could never. The problems are too big. The challenges are too daunting. The trends of the world around us are too discouraging. But in the midst of that, there are pockets that shrink and grow depending on the vitality of the lives of the individuals who inhabit them. And when you come across one of those pockets, one of those communities, when you are a part of one of those, you know viscerally that God is alive and well. And so it is not any individual Christian, any individual saint's responsibility to redeem the world. Thanks be to God that that is not my job and that that is not your job. But what is accessible to us through the example of the life whose we do call Redeemer is that our own piety and devotion to God coupled with our courage to put that into practice so that blessing may be multiplied in the world around us is within our reach. Saints are so much more than images on a coin or a figurine or a cartoon character or the designation of some church's bureaucratic process. Saints are among us. Saints could even be us as we take seriously the invitation that, that God gives us to accept his unconditional love and to be vessels through which it flows. When we start looking around the world with our own eyes and listening with our own ears from that vantage point, you start to see more and more opportunities in which your life can be a blessing. In some ways, the designation of saint is less important than the accumulations of actions that led there. The designation of saint is only something that comes as a consequence of a life lived in faithfulness and responsive action to others around us. So let us not be so concerned about who has the title or whether or not that seems anywhere close to accessible given the things that we know about our own lives. But instead, let us resolve to be alert for the next opportunity for saintly practice. And we don't have to put that label on it. And nobody's gonna go around and put a crown of halo around the top of your head. But God's Holy Spirit is with you, empowering you this day and in the days of this week to come to be able to discern when those opportunities come and to be able to respond in the spirit of the saints. Amen.